Different people interpret media messages differently according to their age and life experience. That is one of the key concepts of media literacy, and it also helps us understand our TV and movie rating systems. Programs that are appropriate for adults and older children, for example, may not be the best for younger children. Viewers benefit when they select TV and movies that are appropriate for their age, interests, and experience. In this example, viewers of different ages and backgrounds are watching the same program about sharks. Each one of them has a different reaction to the show. It made me feel excited. When the shark came up looking close, it was like cool because you could see his eyes. I'm scared a little bit. And what was scary to you? When the um, shark, when the shark was getting the fish. I was afraid the man might get hurt by the sharks. It made me feel good because it was cool. It made me feel scared. Like I'm gonna throw up. It felt like it was cool. Oh, because I like sharks a lot. Scary. The shark um, looked really hungry, and because he had um, food in his hand, that the shark might go for his hand instead of the fish. He was like in a horror movie. It was kind of me because if the, I was watching it at school, because I knew that nothing would bad happen. I was a little frightened because I thought maybe um, when the shark at the end went to bite his hand, that he was going to bite his hand off kind of scary. And I was also feeling like a little edgy because I wanted to know if the shark was going to bite him or not. More, more and more sharks kept coming so it was like I thought it was going to be a feeding frenzy or something. It was kind of really scary but because when he went down and they said that he had to give, give his arm to the shark and it could be like shark has really sharp teeth so it could bit it off. I gave, it gave a little bit of sympathy to the shark. Like the shark didn't do anything and they're going to shoot uh, this gun at them. And, um, and it didn't seem right. It made me feel that, like, something was going to happen to him, because in the Jaws movies, every time the music comes on, the shark's closer to the boat, and somebody dies, or somebody get eaten by the shark. It was kind of scary how, like, he was doing it, and the gun wasn't working, and, like, that was supposed to try to save his life, but... Kind of scary. Suspense and fear. Like, I couldn't imagine being in that situation. If the gun didn't work and the shark is right there, I mean, that's it, it's over. My life would have flashed before my eyes. And I could, in a sense, feel his fear. It brings fear, and it brings, and having all the music and everything. Like, like Jaws. And they're about to attack you, and it's just scary. I felt scared for the, uh, for the diver. But then uh, I kind of I had a little bit of hope for him because he had the gun. I'm pretty sure that they would end up being successful. I mean, majority of TV shows don't like to end up in a bloody or quite a, of a yucky type of situation, you know. So I'm pretty sure that it ended up in something that they were able to accomplish what they wanted. The sound made the whole picture scary. But if you look at the video carefully, I saw um, the person with the food in his hand it was kind of stimulating the shark so it didn't seem that that the shark was actually attacking him but he was putting his hand into the shark's mouth so it wasn't that scary to me just the sound made it sound like jaws i thought the narrator made it sound kind of scary because he was his tone of voice made it made me anticipate something bad was going to happen i was waiting for the shark to sort of be like ah uh, and like take the guy's suit off or something and something horrible I sort of let down when his gun didn't work it was sort of a, a letdown for the whole entire thing I was I was waiting for maybe a little more blood uh, spill or something like that even though it was it, it was meant for educational purposes and not entertainment it was very entertaining felt a little anxious watching what these men were going through it made me feel a little fearful and a little in awe and you know you always wonder when you watch these things if somebody's there filming then what's their position? You know what I mean? If this is so dramatic, or, or if you see somebody climbing Mount Everest, if this is so horrible and so dangerous, there's a guy standing there with a camera filming all this. So that's not saying it's trivial, but you still wonder um, how truly dangerous it really is. I was surprised how much uh, the um, uh, scientists, how much effort they put into trying to do the experiment. And of course it was upsetting when the gun didn't go up, off.
Using a stainless steel chain mail suit for protection, Marty's goal will be to lure the shark close enough to bite one arm while firing the repellent gun with his free hand. Although the chemical has been proven to repel sharks, the gun is untested, and Marty will only have a single shot, one that must be delivered at point-blank range to be effective. Marty will be joined underwater by Rocky Strong, who without a protective suit, will observe from the cage. The scientists have launched the shark cage not only to protect Rocky, but to provide a stable handhold against the current. Although they are highly stimulated by the bait and chum in the water, the hungry sharks are cautious. To lure the blues away from the bait near the boat, Rocky continues chumming from the cage, hoping to attract a subject to Marty. But the shark snatches Marty's fish away before a shot can be fired. He will have to draw them closer. Meanwhile, an aggressive blue has moved in on Rocky and must carefully evict the curious shark. On the verge of a feeding frenzy, a third shark arrives, slowly circling on the threshold of attack. Pumping the trigger with his free hand, Marty is unable to fire the gun. Something has gone wrong. A TV guide is an excellent tool for making informed decisions about what TV shows to watch. You can use the TV guide grid or read the show names and descriptions from the list of programs. To start using the TV Guide grid, look first at the top where the time periods are shown. Find the time period that is closest to the current time, then read down the column until you find an interesting title. Go across the rows to find the name of the network or channel. If you have cable TV, you may need to go to the front of the TV Guide to find out what number that channel is set to in your community. You can find out more about new and unfamiliar shows and movies by reading these descriptions. The TV guide also indicates the quality of the movie with stars. You'll see the TV ratings for each show too. Many programs have short descriptions of the episode. These can be useful if you want to watch a favorite episode or don't want to see a rerun. <laughs> 